deep squat, heels on the ground should be an inherent human ability for functioning bodies. That means you should be able to do it too, but yeah. you need ankle and knee and hip mobility to make that happen. All right, so starting with the ankle mobility, if you have a pole just like this, all you have to do is get into a calf stretch just like this. But instead of having your knee straight, you're mostly stretching this muscle up here. What you wanna do is bend your knee and drive your knee close to the pole. And you're gonna feel a deeper stretch down toward the bone. That's your soleus muscle, it's a little bit deeper in. But why does ankle mobility even matter? Yeah, so it, wh why, why does it matter? Well, I guess I'm the foot guy. <laughs> um, well, I, th I think the biggest problem is you look at like squats and most people have this idea that like, oh, if you know, you have this folding proportions, it's like from the ground to your knee, the knee to your hip and hip to your shoulder, that if you just have too short of a torso and too long of a femur, you're just never gonna be able to squat. But the reality is you've got these joints, your knees, your hips, and your ankles that allow you to bend. And so if you, depending on the length of your femur or the length of your torso, you're gonna need different proportions of flexibility. Yeah. And the further past your toes that your knee can bend, the easier it's going to be to hold this deep squat position. But you can modify that. So instead of starting out with great ankle mobility, you can actually, get something like a slant board just like this and elevate your heels. Now with the heels elevated, it's gonna be a whole lot easier to get the knees past the toes so that you can sink into that stretch just like this. You can hold this for time or you can do it for reps or partial reps. I personally like to do little small pulses down here. I feel like it really gets the blood pumping to the knees. So. Well, the, the cool thing about it is because he's got the elevated heel, he's able to load himself more vertically. So you see how his torso is upright and his yeah. knees going forward? Like if he shifted his torso forward and his hips went back, he is now less, we got less bend in the ankle. So yeah. by elevating the knee or elevating the ankle, he's able to get the knees forward. And so this is where you want, because if you want to make change in your body, you have to have consequence. You can't just say, oh, I want to go and, you know, do this and expect there to be difference. You have these really, really dense, tough tissues that are around your muscles, that form your tendons. It's called fascia, and that only responds to the range of motion you put under load. Kind of like making some rules if you have kids and you say, all right, don't do that. They got to have like a consequence for why you shouldn't do it. Yeah. Otherwise, it doesn't really matter. So the cool thing is in this position, because the heels are elevated just a little bit, you can add some load and get stronger and stronger. And then you could, so if you put his heels all the way up at the top, you see how there's, he's got even more, he can really drive it forward. And so the progression is you don't just go from that to flat ground yet, but you would walk down a little bit and a little bit and a little bit more and a little bit more until finally you're on the ground. Yeah. And it takes time. I mean, this is like a few weeks process to really make some big changes in that. And sometimes if you don't have a slant board, you can actually grab a weight just like this. And the further out in front of you it is, the easier it is to hold that position. Like, look, my knees are not even past my toes whatsoever. The closer the weight goes to my body, the further past my toes my, my knees need to go. So you can play with this as well. So the, this is an interesting piece. So I've got a fairly, fairly long torso for my, I don't know, my legs. <laughs> but because I can kind of sit and I can get to a deep squat but without any ankle range of motion. So it's not all one size fit all. But if I had a longer torso, or sorry, longer femurs, and I had to drive forward, you'd see how I need to be able to shift to that position. So again, uh, I've got a buddy who's six foot seven, and he can squat all the way down. It's, you can do it. It just takes ankle range of motion. But that's actually why they have those fancy Olympic weightlifting shoes with the raised heel, because it gives you a little bit of an added uh, a bit advantage. Of a boost, yeah. yeah. And the last step to being able to do this deep squat is the hip mobility. So the easier you can bring your knee closer to your chest, the easier it's going to be to hold this because even with my knees behind my toes, if I just mm -hmm. bring my knee closer to my body, I'm gonna be able to hold this position. So how do we work on that? Well, that's a good point. And just on that point, one of the things to, to, to highlight that, I may have, I may be able to get away with less ankle range motion, but I have to have great hip flexibility. So mm -hmm. my hips are super flexible and it's a trade-off. So there are these foldability proportions, your ankle, your knee and your hip all matter. So we're gonna cover the hip and then we'll come back to problems if you have any issues at the knee. Yeah, so if you just sit on a lower box like this, spread your legs a little bit, and then you grow as tall as you possibly can and just hinge forward, you're gonna feel a stretch through the adductors and you might even feel it towards your glutes. Those are all good places to feel it. You wanna find that deep stretch and then lift yourself up out of it. And you don't need any weight at all. I like to do it 
for reps, but you can also hang down at the bottom. And if your back is uninjured, you can also just relax into it and sink into that stretch. And that's gonna help a lot with gaining that hip range of motion to bring that all the way to you. Now, this is interesting just to notice the, the, the difference with the bent knee. So this is kind of the same thing as like a uh, pancake stretch. If, mm -hmm. You know, I'm not, he's the flexible one, <laughs> but the pancake feet are wide. So the difference is that the legs are straight. So because the legs are straight, it stretches this more. And so it's a little bit harder to get into that position. Yeah. And so understand that every time you bend a joint, or you bend the knee, you straighten the knee, you're gonna have different muscles that get worked. So that's why you can find things like I can elevate the hips and bend the knee, that's gonna be beneficial. I can also do a similar thing, which is gonna be the least, well, let's just say if I were to sit, the least challenging if I were to sit on a pad, elevate my hips and lower forward, then I can start to get to this position of, all right, now I'm working with the knees bent, so it's less strain here. Then I would extend that, leaning forward, you can elevate, so there's lots of options here. but. The point is that like to explore and play with this stuff, but you, as long as you have these big principle pictures or big picture of saying, all right, my hips need to have some range of motion, and some flexibility. They need to be able to rotate because the hips don't just bend. It's not just as like I fold forward. It's I have this ball and socket joint that rotates. And if I don't have the ability to rotate that femur, which is the big leg bone in that hip, then it gets stuck. And so that's where you can start to play around with stuff like rotation. So you can sit down at the end. So you're kind of getting this tall position and you're rotating left and rotating right. And that makes a big difference with your hips ability to have some type of mobility. Yeah. And the last thing I'll say about these knees here is if it's just impossible to get your hamstring on top of your calf, even sitting in a position like this, it might be worth your while to get some fabric like a beanie, put it behind the knee and then kind of sit into that stretch. This is called a joint mobilization right there. It's gonna be painful at first, but don't go too far into it. You don't wanna cause yourself pain. You just wanna feel that pressure build up in the knee and then back off of it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And you can do that for reps, just like this, slow little pulses. Or you can find that spot where the pressure is in that sweet spot and hold that for around 30 seconds or so. And I like to do things in sets of three, but you can do it however you like, so. Yeah, and one important thing to note is that even though a lot of people experience pain in their knee, whether they have old surgeries or old mm -hmm. irritations, the vast majority of problems at the knee happen because of loss of foot and ankle mobility, meaning it's uh, the thing that would otherwise absorb force and like direct where your body's going up the chain gets imp impinged and has problems or hip or hip range of motion problems. So your hip can't rotate, you can't mm -hmm. flex. And so when the foot and ankle or the hip has problems, the knee is kind of the thing that gets taken, it's the awkward middle child. So, so if you can imagine having horrible ankle mobility and horrible hip mobility, your knee is probably gonna have horrible mobility as well. And so that generally means pain. It's a good idea to work on that ankle mobility, work on that hip mobility, and then we can address the knee. Absolutely, so it's just an idea of like, it's it's not always where the pain is that the problem is, and so it's important that you think of your entire body as one unit, mm -hmm. and everything from your toes all the way to your hips makes a big, big difference in terms of getting the stuff. So the other, I think the last point is that like, no matter where you have problems or pain or limitations, it's affecting other things. And so if you wanna work on a big picture, like a big deep squat, you gotta have everything working together. You can't have a weak point or a pain point. Yeah, strength is never weakness. Stay Weak. flexy. <laughs>